so we're here with part two and we now have Mr. 4.0 from Misfits join us as well. So I mean, now he was getting into a little bit of, you know, how you guys have kind of worked together and you have your different pieces but work collaboratively. Right. But kind of get into your background, like how long you've been doing this, kind of some of the people you've worked with. Um, I've probably been making music since I was like 17. Um, I work with a lot of people along with GQ. Um, Train the Truth. Uh, Bob Gaines. Los. Los. Yeah. I think one of my first like main placements was with Los. And Joe Button. And Joe. Oh yeah, and Joe Button. Oh. Um, cool. Yeah, Los, Joe Button. Oh, Courtney Noel from um, Taylor Gang. Taylor Gang. Um, <laughs> with Kid Ink. Yeah, Kid Ink. Okay, that's that, that's. Juicy J. Juicy J. Uh, <laughs> he, he got a lot. I gotta say, he be working. We be working. That's all we gonna say. We be working. We there working you go. out there. There working. you go. I think it's yeah. It's, probably, it's probably it's probably more, but we be working. So what is your process when you when you're going in to create music, and then when you come to meet with the artist, like what's what's your process and um, as far as like I guess meeting with the artist, that's where GQ comes in more so. Like I'm more low key. Okay. Um, I try not to be really in the spotlight. Like, this is extreme to me, to be honest. <laughs> well, well we feel very privileged. We appreciate it. Yo, he was like, he basically said I set him up because he was like, no, <laughs> man, he dude, like man, he was like, dude, you know he be talking to like, dude, yo. Yo, you know I'm like doing an interview cut, you feel me, duh? I, I'm like, pretty sure that's not how he that was like, went. I'm from, he was like, I'm from New Zealand, man. <laughs> so he don't be like all that. But he, he he doesn't really do interviews. Like, he don't okay, so we, we have a real exclusive, guys. Exclusive. See, I told you. I'm just chills. I'm low key. key. But um, I guess my process, I like I like atmospheric music a lot. Like, uh, uh, like Sade's or Inyo's. Or my favorite is um, Imogen Heap. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's amazing. I know I mention her like anytime I have done an interview, I always mention her because she's like my main inspiration nice. for all music that I make. So. Okay. Alright. So with everything that you please let me work with you one day. If you see this <laughs> interview, I want to work with you so We bad. might have to you mean, we you know, we have to try <laughs> send this to her so she can see that yes. and make that happen. So with everybody that you've worked with thus far, you know, we're we're in the indie music scene and even the majors have kind of shifted more so to become an independent of their labels. When you're listening to music, is there anybody who's kind of caught your ear lately that you kind of, you know, waiting to see what they're going to do or develop into as an artist? Um, Artist-wise and, and producers, because I listen to both. Okay. Like, I can't help but to pay attention to production anytime I listen to music. Usually right. I'm listening to this. It kind of sucks because when you're a producer, your ear becomes tuned to right. every little thing. Right. So you start to not even pay attention to lyrics a lot of times. You start okay. to just notice like um, the nuances. Yeah, little nuances. And it's uh, it's crazy to kind of segue in. As a producer, right, it fucks with your head because like I can listen to an album okay. six times over and I won't hear any lyrics because like my first thing that comes to my mind is like the production. Mm -hmm. It's probably the same way because you be like, you be jamming, you be wanting to hear what they saying, but it just like, <laughs> It fades away. Yeah. You don't right. hear the. You don't hear no voices. Music. You be like, you just be focused on the melodies and right. the drums. And it's it like, gets to the point where you may hear a, a snare drum, something as simple as that, but you know where it came from, or you know maybe what record it was borrowed from. Okay. So a lot of times people borrow snares. Yeah. We all do it though. Yeah. We all borrow. Do you feel like okay? Because there's a lot of music now. I really don't know how much music is really original without having some kind of sample or influence from something else. Do you feel like some samples are exploited in a way? Because we just, there's a couple artists out there who've kind of been going through suits with their music uh, and sampling. Do you feel like it's getting exploited or do you feel like maybe they should just kind of maybe pay a little more homage when they put the song out? Like, it, that's the, a touch and go kind of thing. Like the, so, you know, that, that goes from, you know, the level of like, the guy in the basement, you know, the kid in the basement to mainstream producers. They all borrow, they all sample a lot. Some of them don't, or they try to not give credit to, uh, you know, the original artist. But I don't want to mention those people. Right, yeah, you know? of course. <laughs> but I mean, how, do you feel like it's something intentional or do you feel like people just kind of overlook it? Like it's just like a, oh, oh no, well, I sampled it, but. Definitely. Oh, it's a lot of times, yeah. Because you got to pay money, so it's a lot of Got you. Got you. Oh, I'm sorry. I definitely did. Um, I guess uh, digress from what you asked me about the music that I listen to. Mm -hmm. But um, 
One of my favorite producers from here is Ghost. He's super dope. Um, I listen to his music a lot. Uh, artists like Stars, um, Damon Blue, um, Jay Fetty is really dope mm -hmm. from Baltimore. Obviously, my brother Jay Oliver, yeah. um, producer and artist. So, but that's just a few. I listen to a lot of different, um, I guess, uh, up and coming or local artists. Okay. Right. So, do you feel like you have? I guess uh, a special thing that you do within your production or a strong suit or something that you favor more as a producer. I feel like every producer kind of has their thing. Yeah, um, definitely. Like I said, my main influence is those artists that made more atmospheric music. Okay. Um, like I like Genesis a lot, like maybe later Genesis, maybe like towards the 80s. Okay. Not to say that the 70s Genesis Not wasn't OT dope. Genesis, right? Huh? Not OC Genesis. No, not OC Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You don't want to be in love with the cold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about Phil Collins. Um, yeah, his his uh, solo stuff is awesome too. I know you've heard it in the air tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that more atmospheric, like, the drums aren't in the back. They're like at the forefront, but they have enough reverb to spread them. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's not just so bass heavy. Okay. Whereas nowadays it's yeah. Yeah. So people kind of just look for the drum yeah. beat and they know that and that's what they kind of vibe off of. Okay, so if people want to, you know, reach out and, and work with you, how's that process work? Talk to that dude. Talk to this guy. <laughs> so you like talk to this guy and you might get this guy and the whole it'll thing. Be <laughs> the company's email is Misfit Sounds, the number four ever at gmail.com. You can hit us on our production page misfit sounds at ig at twitter i think that's it right yeah 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 ig 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 yeah so misfit sounds that's see how i we buy in m-i-z-f-i-t-z-s-o-u-n-d-z oh these guys are dope there's a third component but unfortunately he wasn't Salem was awesome who is like the best pianist ever that's what i'm saying ever yes it's awesome shout out to salem matt tanaya the third member of Misfit Sounds. I think you got the juice right now, you feel me? Yes. You feel me? These guys have been great. If you guys want to see more, experience more. Uh, let me more. Ask, you, can I ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite producer? Here? Yeah. Here, <laughs> here and in the industry. Ooh, in the industry. I probably still gotta go with Timberland. Okay. I've grown up listening to him and a lot of the artists that he produced, and I feel like even now, I really love Aaliyah growing up. And he's working with Tink, and I can just feel him bringing that R&B vibe back, and that's what I miss. And I feel like he he's brought it into the current date and time without losing the essence of what it used to be. So that's why I would probably say him. Here, huh. damn that's tough. I'm to probably going to have to say ghost stuff. I was say, you don't have to say ghost because we was no, number no, no, two no, on the no, magazine. No, 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 no. And the reason <laughs> I'm going to say ghost is because I've heard some of his stuff and he does lay so low key. Mm -hmm. But it's just a rhythm that's just in his music that I would say, yeah, number one. It but you guys will actually still be. Hmm? Yeah, and again, and I, I grew up in the 90s, so I, uh, that, it just takes me back. But you guys will be in my top three. Top so. Three. So he's yeah. one, so who's, who's two and three? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is now Misfit Sounds uh, <laughs> magazine. We are uh, not gonna go on interview. record. We are not gonna go on record with that, but they are in my top three. They are. So just know, number one right now. But they are in my top three, and that's all that matters. They were number two on the list for a reason. We did our research. We checked the facts because the people moved up and down the list a lot. But check it out. They're here. Next the interview was next, great. I ain't gonna lie. Next year we gonna probably be number one. Yeah, we coming for niggas' heads this year, though. I love like, that. Like, the work, the, like, I don't know if y'all, like, y'all probably not even peeping. Like, we're in the studio. We're actually getting mic records mixed. That record in the background, our records were getting mixed. Like, that's that was a record that we're going to be submitting to Tanache. To, mm, to Tanache. So, like, y'all got to get, like, a glimpse. You hear that fucking drum break? Like, that drum going off? You hear that fucking simply, my nigga? You hear that fucking bass? What? <laughs> that shit's crazy. You hear that sample? Y'all probably ain't gonna, that shit. That sample ain't gonna probably hit y'all on the head mm -hmm. until like six months from now. Y'all be like, yo, what the fuck they use? And be like, y'all gonna be watching like BET uh, classic movies or some shit. Y'all gonna pick up the movie it came from. But <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Or 
when Tinashe drops the song, we'll find out. Or we might have another conversation with them. Yeah. When it comes out. When it comes out. We'll but see. Like, we're going we're gonna to be on her album. I have faith. Like, I'm going to speak it into existence. Yeah. Bam. Power of attraction. You should live by that. Mm -hmm. It's real. That's it. We're going to wrap it up. Yo, These guys I, have been great. Yo, hold up. And I got them oils for sale, shorty. We're not. Don't pay GQ. <laughs> Y'all see he put 